Hello, hello, welcome to HimDev Development, where we are preparing the best tutorials to make your mobile application development easier and more efficient. In this second part of our Flutter series of tutorials, we will add a controller for our web view to be able to fully control it, such as getting the current URL, going forward, backward, refreshing the page, clearing the cache, and so on. In our case, we will display the current URL address on the screen. In addition, we add towbar and floating action button to the application. We will learn the difference between the stateless widget and the stateful widget. And also basic info about the concept of future, future builder, completer and async event mechanism in Flutter. Procedure First we open our existing application from the previous tutorial and we open the file shop underscore page.dart. We run the application to see the current state from which to start. This is a simple web view that we created in the previous tutorial. And now we want our application to look really like an application, so it should have some top bar in it and some floating action button on the bottom. So how to do it? As the first step, we add the scaffold widget to our shop page widget. The scaffold widget provides a framework that implements the basic material design structure of the visual layout for the Flutter application. It offers an API for displaying up bars, drawers, snack bars, floating buttons, bottom sheet and many other components and you can also set the background color, add navigation bars and so on. So instead of container in the build method, we'll be returning the scaffold widget. In our case, we add the up bar component to our shop page widget where we set the title of the widget and the floating action button to perform certain actions while the application is running. The scaffold widget also has a body attribute that draws a hierarchy of other widgets into the canvas, in our case WebView. For the title of the screen, we create a private variable underscore title and we set it to himdevshop. In the meantime, we create an empty underscore build change title button method to change the title of this widget at the top of the screen at application runtime. And now let's go to change the stateless widget to stateful widget. We will change stateless widget to stateful widget so our shop page widget will inherit from a stateful widget. The constructor remains almost the same except that we skip the const parameter. The difference between stateless widget and stateful widget is that stateless widgets do not require mutable state which means they are immutable. So they cannot change their state while the app is running. This means that widgets that are rendered in this widget hierarchy under the stateless widget in the build method cannot be redrawn while the app is running. The build method is called only once during the application run. The build method is responsible for drawing widgets on the screen. If we wanted to redraw the stateless widget, we would have to create a new instance of it. Stateful widgets have a mutable state and can be rendered on the screen multiple times during one application run. The stateful widget has a createState method by which we return the instance state of the widget, in our case the instance of the private class underscore shop page state. This class inherits from a state object that has a build method and this method can be called several times while the application is running to redraw the screen. We convert the createState method to its simplified form. The easiest way to redraw the screen is by using the setState method which calls the build method which then renders all widgets in its widget hierarchy. To test how the setState method works in practice, we will create a private underscore build change title button method which will return floating action button where we will change the title for the screen from himdeve shop to himdeve development tutorial. On pressed is a callback method of floating action button that has no parameters. And as an icon to this button, we will give an icon representing the title. Then we can run the application and test the functionality. We click on the floating action button 
and we can see that the top bar has changed from HIMDEV shop to HIMDEV development tutorial. Unfortunately, the WebView widget doesn't work much on the setState method, so if we want to change the WebView URL from HIMDEV.EU to HIMDEV.COM for example, we need to use the WebView controller which has a special method loadURL with the new URL argument. WebView is a widget that must be rendered to the screen and must also initialize its state. This process is asynchronous and takes a short time. However, this means that if we want to directly access the WebView controller now, it may not be ready yet. It will be ready sometimes in future. Therefore, we use the completer class which allows us to process future objects and then complete them with their value or error. So in our case, the completer objects encapsulate the WebView controller and we can then check whether the WebView controller is ready, valid, by calling the controller.isCompleted method or use the future builder class, which is actually a widget that is built on the latest snapshot interactions of the future. This means, in our case, that future builder will allow us to create new UI widgets such as our floating action button only after we have prepared our valid WebView controller. So we define the encapsulated WebView controller to completer. In the WebView object we set a new attribute on WebView created which returns the WebView controller object when it is ready. and we set this object instead of our placeholder in completer. We then want to create a method that returns floating action button which will display the current URL of our webview page. We call it underscore build show URL button. So we will replace the underscore build change title button method with the underscore build show URL button method in the scaffold widget. And this method returns the future builder widget of WebView controller, where the future represents an info about whether the WebView controller is valid. So it is valid when completer has data, in our case controller dot has data, then we will return the floating action button widget, otherwise we will return the empty container widget. We set the floating action button icon to link because we want to get the link or URL of the current page. The interaction of pressing floating action button is captured using the onPress attribute and then the current URL address is obtained from the WebView controller using the command controller.data.currenturl. What is important to note here is that the WebView controller in our completer is a future object, which means that if we want to get its value in the present, we need to use the async away mechanism. Away command pauses the running code and waits until the future is resolved, that is, in our case, until the current URL address is obtained from the WebView controller and then proceeds to the next line. When using await in function, this function runs the risk of blocking the main thread and must therefore be marked with the async command to make it asynchronous. What's important to note is that the onPress attribute, which is the floating action button's own callback method, is returning void so far, so we can say it doesn't return anything. But now, by marking it with the async command, it must return the future in this case future void. In this example it doesn't matter since onPress basically doesn't return anything, but if we have a function that returns for example an integer, so once we use the async command we need to define the return value of the function from integer to future integer. To display the URL address we use the snackbar widget. We use its content attribute where we set the text widget with the current URL value of WebView and we set the style for that text widget to increase the font size. Scaffold.offContext means that we will return scaffold from the closest ancestor of scaffold 
in this widget hierarchy. In this case, the scaffold we created for this underscore shop page states class. Then we display the snake bar using the scaffold.offContext.show snake bar function. Now we can restart the application. For the current version of WebView, the application needs to be stopped and restarted. And when we click on the floating action button, we can see the current URL of our WebView component. And so our second part of this first series of Flutter tutorials is completed and of course you can find the complete source code on the GitHub as well as on our website himdeve.com. Bye bye.